Well, hello everybody, you're watching Channel One, and in this video, I'm going to be changing the front brakes on my Citroen C4 Grand Picasso. I hope this is some help to you. The first thing you're going to want to do is find your brake reservoir underneath the bonnet and remove the cap from it, just so as you're pushing the pistons back into the calipers, any fluid is going to have a, an easy escape out of the reservoir. Um, but if it's already quite high, you might want to put a cloth underneath there to make sure uh, nothing drips down on the engine. And you're going to want to slacken the wheel nuts off on the wheel you're going to be working on. And because I'm working on the left hand wheel, I've turned it all the way to the left. Because um, it makes access to the brake caliper later easier on. With those slack, you can jack the car up uh, and remove the wheel. Which should present you with... This, the brake disc and caliper. Now it is the discs which my MOT station has identified as the problem, um, but if you're changing the discs you should always change the pads too. Now a picture of many arrows. Uh, for those that don't know fully what's going on, uh, as you brake a piston comes out of the caliper, uh, pushing the brake pads either side of the disc. Um, and as the brake pads wear down, that piston stays further and further out of the caliper. And you need to push that back into the caliper to enable new full-size brake pads to go in. Um, and this is a very good technique of doing that without a brake piston pushback tool um, or windback tool. Um, I do have one. Um, but on this vehicle, you can do it quite simply like this. Now, I've identified where the piston is. Um, the rubber boot that goes around the piston that just stops any dirt and grime getting onto it because it is a very tight fit. Uh, and it needs to stay that way so you can't have it getting any corrosion on it. Uh, and the actual backing plate to the brake pad. Uh, what you can see I've done is I've got a screwdriver down just inside that backing plate uh, and resting on the caliper because with that you can prise the brake pad um, backwards uh, and push the piston back in uh, and here are a couple of pictures of that piston just getting pushed further and further back in You can see here, you can't really see the piston anymore because it is fully seated back in the caliper. Uh, but you can see where the backing plate is. I've actually got my screwdriver now um, on the brake pad material, um, which looks, well, like it doesn't need changing. Um, but as I say, it wasn't the, cal the brake pads that were shown as worn, it was the brake discs are showing as a uh, needing replacement. With that done, you need to remove this spring here. I have coloured it all in yellow so you can see its whole shape. And it can be quite simply done by popping your screwdriver in either end of it where it meets the caliper and just prising it away. And with the top and bottom done, it should come off in your hand like this. Next, we're on to removing the caliper itself. Um, and I rather like that Citroen have done this. There are these little plastic caps over the bolts that you need to undo. So you just want to um, prise those out. Uh, here is far too many pictures of me doing that. And with those removed, they will reveal these 7mm. You can just about see the top on there. Uh, Allen key bolts, um, which are what actually hold the caliper on to its mounting bracket. And of course, you need to undo those, uh, so here they are coming out. And you will see um, there's quite a long shaft on them, it's because the caliper actually slides along that um, as it's working. And with that done, you can now remove the caliper simply by pulling it forwards off the brake disc, where you will generally be left with one brake pad left in the brake carrier, uh, and one brake pad actually in the caliper still itself. Um, the arrow I've got on my caliper one um, shows some scoring of the brake pad, which does tell me the inside of the disc is not quite as it should be. But you can now then also just 
hang that caliper up on the brake coil. So you just want to remove that brake pad uh, and dispose of it properly uh, and we get on to taking the disc off. Uh, first thing again you're going to want to do is slacken these two T30 bolts on the brake disc uh, and the best way I've found of doing it is if you put a screwdriver down the ventilated part of the disc uh, on the left hand wheel as I've marked at the bottom here you want your screwdriver resting down there uh, to counteract the torque of you undoing the screws and when you undo the right hand side one put the screwdriver at the top uh, and they shouldn't really be too tight um, but I'm just removing that here and if you're working through this yourself as you're watching the video this is where you might get unstuck because these bolts which hold the brake caliper bracket on are effectively a Torx bit head uh, so you need the reverse of that which is considered an E type socket uh, and I used an E18 it was a little bit loose to be honest um, but I don't undo many of these bolts to know how they should fit on um, but it got the job done nonetheless and while that's in your hand you might as well clean off the grooves top and bottom of this bracket um, which is what the pads fit in and slide down now you're in a position to remove the disc which should just pull quite simply off the hub uh, wherever you are fitting your new discs I hadn't got any brake cleaner with me, carb cleaner is just as good, so I presume this is just as good as well, EGR and carb cleaner. You just want to spray over the disc surface and give them a wipe just to remove any grease or residue uh, that I put on at the factory to keep the discs bright. They quite often put um, a little film over there um, just to stop them corroding. So you can now fit that brake disc onto your hub and put the retaining screws in and despite this being quite a good quality brake disc it only came with some Phillips head screws for this. Um, presumably because they don't need to be too tight and I'm sure the quality would be good um, but I preferred to fit the Torx head bits that were originally fitted. As I say they don't need to be done up tight because the bolts that hold your wheel on are going to stop your disc from going anywhere. With the disc on you can now fit the caliper hanger uh, onto the hub uh, again using those E18 headed bolts um, and fit in then your first brake pad. The caliper brake pad is slightly different uh, as you pull that out you will see it has these clips which fit inside the piston so with your new pad um, you're going to need to push those home uh, and make sure that is fully seated which when done means you can slide your caliper back over the disc and now one of the more troublesome parts of the job getting this spring back into position you'll see it has these two pins here which fit into these two holes on the caliper uh, and it should, should all be kept under tension when it is on. Uh, you can see I've ended up using a screwdriver just to prise the bottom part into position. Then um, with my large screwdriver again just tap either part of the, uh, of the pins um, on the end of the spring just to make sure they're seated fully home in the caliper. And when that is done it should look something like this and now you can bolt your caliper up um, you can see I've put a little bit of copper slip on these bolts um, just making sure you put the top and bottom ones in and of course tighten them up with that M7 Allen key and you're into the home stretch now because all you really need to do is pop on the covers over those two bolts uh, make sure they're fully seated and you're pretty much done so just pop your wheel back on drop the car down torque the bolts up mm, torque yeah tighten the bolts up uh, and you're as good as finished but one critical pit you must do next is pump the brake pedal 
if you just push the pistons back into the caliper as far as they go they need to be pushed back out to get the, the pads touching the disc and if you don't do that first time you come to hit the brakes you will probably not have any uh, so yes make sure you do that and finally just check your brake fluid level pop the cap on and you are done and there's nothing left for me to say other than thank you very much for watching i do hope this was of some help to you i have some honda jazz brakes which i have also changed and will show in the next video where i do have to use the uh, brake piston wind back tool if you're interested in that and um, but whatever you're doing folks stay safe take care peace everybody